when it comes to sideboarding, you know, you know what you're trying. Like that's that's the cool thing about sideboarding is like you sideboard to uh, fight um, to fight their deck. You know, you know what I'm saying. Like you bring in these cards to fight it, and it's going to be interesting to see with these sideboard cards that uh, Samsung has as we get ready to start. Absolutely, and I would have to say, like for these two decks, like uh, Sam's got a really nice diverse sideboard that can target a variety of decks. And when we take a look at the Quintorus list, I mean, in the sideboard, we're seeing things for the Quakebringer combo. We have Consecrates and Consumes. We have Thought Distortions and Bedeck and Bedazzle. So not quite the diverse variety that you'd have, but more targeting the strategy. Something of like a transformational sideboard for the strategy, right? So you get transitional, which is what Sam has. Adapting the deck, keeping your strategy, and hitting in still while doing your sacrifice loops. Whereas the Quintoris deck is probably going to try to swap out what their combo is doing, making it transformational. So I'm curious to see how game two and game three are going to play out. Hopefully, you know, we, we get to a game three because I love seeing game threes. But, uh, you know, our, we'll see how the, the players that bulge out. But uh, Sacrifice versus yeah. combo, it can go a lot of ways. Yeah, and right now um, Sam, Sam is in a great spot. I mean, even with this, you you threw you threw two cards, and you drew two lands. That's that's fine, because uh, you st you can just pretty much play out your hand, mayhem, devil, sack, sack the treasure to do some damage, get the Calder familiar in, um, and with this Quinn with this Quinn deck, they have the ley line of binding, but I don't see a mass uh, removal spell in here. Yeah, no, usually that deck is lacking on mass removal because it just wants to hit its combo and pad its life total up, right? As soon as turn five wants to come down, they want Quind or turn six for the Carnosaur. Uh, we're already seeing Hollow Bala, though, with uh, ramping ahead with the Greater Tanuki. So turn six around the corner, uh, Trumpetosaur may just come out and, well, there's the binding you were talking about and hitting the Mayhem Devil most likely, right? Yeah, because that that sacrifice because right there, Witch of Oven comes out, and they're very ha they're very happy that they, that they didn't leave that mayhem devil out here. Um, yeah, you just play out your hand. You can you can put Shiganta in your hand, and you just say, "Answer my board." Yeah, and this is gonna come down. Doesn't look like Hollow's got the combo though, so that's good for Sam. Uh, that's what Sam wants to see, right? Like. I don't want to see the combo hit out. I don't want to have any issues. Let me draw into something, hopefully, on the next turn and take this game in. But mm, drawing lands is Ugh. now it's becoming a little rough. You're doing the one ping damage, which is fine. But the problem is here is, uh, like you said, the Quinn the Quinn combo deck has now ramped up. They have six mana. The 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 idea that they don't have a Quinn in hand as they play one. Uh, it's yeah. very unlikely. So here they go. They're going to go for the combo. I believe, Let's, right? Yeah, it's, it's, yeah there, there it is. Yeah, the clever yeah. impersonator. This has a very little poten potential to kind of whiff. I mean, Sam still got to let it go through <coughs> for a few loops to see what happens. But at the moment, uh, Hollow Ballo is cycling through. So we'll see uh, if spark doubles and stuff come in. We're going to be in some trouble. And, and there's one right there. So now... It's gonna be off, yeah. So all right, so now yeah, so now if you're if you're Sam, okay, you had a great start, great start, but you lost. What do you what do you what do you think of here? What is what is your mentality? Are you saying I'm gonna become an aggro deck or I'm gonna become a control deck? Because there is a there is kind of a toolbox to a sideboard, but you still gotta implement your plan. Um, so what 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 is your what is your thought process here? I would switch to control. With Rakdos Sacrifice, while you can ping out a lot of damage in a turn, usually that takes around turn four, turn five, which is when the Quintorus deck is going to pop off if they ramp, right? So I would want to switch my strategy with a bit more control. I'd want to have in my hand disruption, uh, you know, Thoughtseize, Duresses if I've got it, Angrath as we saw Sam bringing in, extra Croxes if I'm rocking it. And I want to do things that are going to tax the opponent's hand down to make it so that if I'm going to lose, at least let me lose to the top deck, which can feel bad, but at least I've played to all my outs that I can. Yeah, and this this hand right here is a, is a really 
This is a solid hand. Like, you get to go turn one, familiar, turn two, Karaxa. Um, and then you can possibly dead it out. If you draw the third land, you get to play Mayhem Devil, hold on to the Deadly Dispute. Uh, but you didn't, so now you can you can still Deadly Dispute here. Yeah, I'm tempted to hold the Dispute until end phase of Hollow Vault, like, instead of Hollow's turn, right? Sack the Cauldron Familiar? Because ideally, yeah. if we can hit into a land and get Mayhem Devil online, we can do Kroxa. And with Kroxa Sacrifice, that enables just more pings for this Mayhem Devil. Yeah, so we're going to get, the, we're gonna get uh, the Goblin because you know what? What's better than making treasures? Making treasures and dealing one damage to an opponent when you try to cast stuff. So yep. that's wonderful. Thank you, Mayhem Devil, for igniting all our dreams with pings. <laughs> yeah. There you go. And if you're on the on the combo uh, the combo side, you you know you brought in. Let's see. I mean, on the combo side, it depends on how you want to take it, right? Like thought distortions could maybe come in, but mm. I don't know. Sure. I don't even know if you do that. That's so late game. Like, what are you really, what are you really getting out of their hand? Use, yeah, uh, like against control, I I would for sure understand, but uh, yeah, I don't know. It's uh, it's hard to say. Like, they maybe they want to do the quick burner strategy. Yeah, uh, but now you get a thought. See, so here you're probably gonna play the mayhem devil. Crack, thought sees them. Yeah, and just try to strip uh, either a combo piece or a, a ramp piece. But it looks like Hollow Ballo's got some interaction in hand. So there's the Greater Tanuki. That's going to ramp Hollow up to four lands, getting ready for Quinn and stuff. So we'll we'll see in. Is there a, is there a Quinn in hand or double Carnosaur? Double Carnosaur. Um, so Leyline yeah. Binding, you're not going to be, unless you're really feeling fearing Leyline Binding, um, if you don't want them to ramp anymore, you take the beanstalk. But I think you're just in a tough spot. I think you're just racing now because you, even if you get rid of one of the carnosaurs, it can still get rid of the mayhem devil. Uh, you obviously have beanstalk. I would have, yeah, that's a good play. I would have said I would have taken beanstalk just to kind of slow them down from uh, ramping and making them, making them, uh, you know, choose on what they want to do. But now. They're gonna play. They're gonna play their land. Possibly beans, beanstalk or um, f fertile footsteps. I I never. I always forget that the venture side is always a different card. I just call it like, oh no, beanstalk. <laughs> no, it's, I it's mean fertile, fertile it, footsteps. When you say beanstalk, people usually know what you're referring to. So like, I get it. <laughs> but yeah, I like going for the beanstalk here. We're just ramping up to up our mana. We're gonna be able to play in our land that guarantees us at the six. For that Carnosaur in the next turn. So Sam is going to have to get another discard effect in. The problem though, Hollow has a Garuda in hand. So the Leyline Binding can still slam down, take a threat of ours away. The Carnosaur is still active in hand, and there's still a Garuda in hand. This, it could be very disgusting. Yeah. So, I mean, if you're Sam, you just got to swing in. You know about the Leyline Binding, okay? So they're gonna. I'm assuming, yeah, Mayhem Devil. Yep, we so eat it with the oven. It. This also gives us be able to play Culture. So do you play Culture Familiar and then Omnixilis? Um, I'd be <laughs> tempted. I think I like doing the two-two, like what Sam's going here, just so we yeah. get a bit of a higher Omnixilis. Yep, forcing the discard. So taxing down Hollow's life. I mean, Hollow at this point just has a combo in hand, so I think it just takes the damage, right? Like we go to A here, and then uh, Carnosaur is still active on turn. Luckily, though, Sam's got that bitter triumph. Yep. So, I mean, if Carnosaur comes down, you answer bitter triumph. 
And we've got a Kroxa in the graveyard that could come out next turn. I, Sam might be able to scoop in uh swing and scoop for game two here. Take it to game three. Oh, but the bitter. Okay, no, but you have bitter triumph, which targets. You still have bitter triumph. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So you're okay. You're you're a little you're a little frustrated there, but you're okay. Yeah. So spark double is going to target Quind, and we answer now. Spark double says nope. Spark fizzles. Nothing. Last turn. Thought sees that is pretty huge, actually. Yeah, because you can you can cro uh, croak croaksa and thought sees and, and hollow make, dead and discard. That is so huge. Yeah. So now you make them discard the carnosaur. Yep. And then what you can do? Oh no, because it's a it's a legendary. Never mind. I'm gonna say. Um, yeah, oh, with the that. Kiki, yeah, that'd be disgusting. Yeah, <laughs> you get right? Kiki Grog, so because then you just get rid of the you just get rid of the copy, and it still deals three damage. Yeah, no. There we go. Sam, oh, nicely done on game two for Sam Sony. Yep, game two, Sam Sony. Now he's gonna be on the draw. They're gonna be on the draw, and this is where you know the play style becomes very interesting because. You got to hold like you, your hand has to. You, you want to have like a Thoughtseize or a Duress to be to see their hand and see what they can play or what you have to play around. Yeah, um, I think ideally Sam's gonna look for that discard effect in a bitter triumph, and that's a bit too slow for what we can really get. I mean, there is some pressure to be done. Blood type could cycle to find in, but I don't know. I don't. I don't think you keep this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you. Oh, he kept it. Okay, oh, I was saying. Okay, Sam is a very like Sam Sony is a very experienced Rakdos player, so there are probably lines we're not even thinking of with this hand. And I, I mean, still granted, like Oven Blood Tide, they're still fantastic openers for this list and are among the top cards you want to grab. So, like you know, Blood Tide Harvester is a clock. It's got a blood token we can sack and cycle. So I I can respect the keep. Well, the second witch's oven kind of not where you want to be, but it is what it is. You can you can toss it to the grave if need be. If we get a cauldron familiar, maybe that would that wouldn't feel too bad. But well, uh, we'll see. Does uh, does Hollow just have the the tanuki coming in? See, and the problem is here is you play if you play the mayhem devil and. Um, and they go lay line binding. That's tough. But yeah. oh, okay, Tanuki. Uh oh, you don't want to see that. No, and we've seen Tanuki on turn three. These three matches, just I mean, when you got when you got it, you got it. So I I, <laughs> I respect having it each game. Okay, so they didn't slam a fifth land, and they didn't slam Quinn. So you're bre you're breathing a little sigh of relief. Yeah, and Bedeck did get brought into the deck. Makes sense. All right, so there there is some worry then from Hollabalo about that Mayhem Devil, which obviously you want to respect because uh, the looping with the Cauldron Familiar eh, is disgusting. Okay, so we're gonna say no more clock. No, nope. clock gone, binding down, but there's a Ooh, with the Stotsies. With Angrath coming down next turn. Oh, double Carnosaur, yeah. Uh, okay, so they're going to try to get some action here. Second thought sees. Mm. Nope, going to be an up next list. Not, not bad. If we can get two thought sees down, it, it helps us, but. But this uh, Angrath is actually going to be really. Because it starts making them discard. It does, which is huge for taxing that hand. Hollow Ball and still out. and Hollow Ball is still land screwed right now, right? We're on four, yeah. so yeah. Even topping a Quinn doesn't do anything for uh, for Hollow. 
There's a okay, so there's a fifth land. Land into and, Karuga, maybe? Yeah, but here's the problem with that. You you get it gets taken. I mean you're gonna draw some you get to draw what? One card? Okay. Yeah, you get so, one card. So it, it yeah, you get to take it and then you sacrifice it with Witch's Oven. Yeah. Oh, you sack it to Obnixilis. Oh, you say yes, you don't even yeah, sack right? it to Witch's Oven. So swing in, play up Nick Nixilis, sack oh. <laughs> Yeah, because oh, we ping them so to nice. nine here, and then Obnixilis uh, forces down the discard to potentially put them to five if they don't discard. So that's so. Oh. Nice. And you have the den as a backup. Yep. There you go. But then, then is still something we can do on uh, next turn for some extra lethal if this pushes Hollow down to five. All right. Making a devil, so life for Sam here because they're going for the quind, right? So quind and life totals. Does Hollow have it? Was this the top deck land, or was the land drawn off the Kuruga? We haven't we haven't seen it immediately come down. Mm. Oh, what if it's a tap land? What if it's a triome? Kind of thinking what they can do. Yeah, I, I like. I feel like if we had the untap, all right. Oh, okay. The so comes it's down. All right, we've got Quintoris. Were Let's you see just it. Sandbagging? Yeah. I I don't know. I I don't think it's sandbagging. Would would, would you still... immediately slam it? Because it can still fizzle, it it's not fizzle, but it can still it can still. Um... I I would have immediately slammed it. Like if I didn't have the um Well the problem though is it goes down to one. So Sam can use the witch's oven to sack the devil and hit with go. the imposter. Yep. So yep. like that's a worry. I would still slam it down to see what we get into, but Yeah. Yeah, I get not I forgot so... I forgot the devil. I forgot the devil does the one damage. Yep. Yeah, the one's pretty clutch there. Yeah. Yeah, Quintoris. No, there's the sack. Yeah, but I mean, I don't think it's technically GG, right? It's not. I mean, Clever Impersonator is a binding to take out Angrath. It's not the worst thing. It... Yeah, but those Obnixiluses need to be answered now. Yeah, they do. Is this a land? Okay, so it's a land. Mm, all right, so that is Carnosaur resolving next turn. Yeah, and you're going to take the two damage. So they, they, they get to go Carnosaur. Playing in another Devil, yep. Because if the Devil, right, we want the Devil out in case Carnosaur hits Quind. And Quind needs to do the minus four. That's our answer to stopping the Quintoris combo still. So let's see how this rolls. There's the Quinn. Okay, yeah. Do you just up tick it though? I feel like you have to, because if you down tick it, well, so if you down tick it, you can still get another spark double or imposter to copy the carnosaur, which keeps it going. And you gain life. You gain life. Yeah. So yeah. So you're still alive. So we have to take care of this original Quind. This forces the Spark Double to now become a trumpeting Carnosaur. That's still going to continue the loop, but depends what the next hit is, and it's another Quind. Into the discover, yeah, and the impersonator. There's your clever impersonator, yep. Oh, so close for for Sam. If we had top deck of thought sees. Spark double in. Yeah. So Sam's letting them play it out though, right? Well let, let's see what happens. Yeah.
And Quintoris, I would imagine this does the Discover 4 again. Like, you just keep running through. Hollow wants to get the combo fully rolling. Spark double, jamming in. We make another Quintoris. Sam's down to 12. Do a Carnosaur. Okay. So at that point, I would have to guess maybe Clever Impersonators and Spark Doubles were out of the deck. And that's why we went for a Carnosaur, so to make sure we didn't whiff on our Discover. Yeah. Could be wrong. But uh, yeah, Token's up and eight life and, <laughs> and four and, and, Carnosaurs. And, and, and you had them, you had, there's the Thoughtseize. No, <laughs> turn too late on the Thoughtseize. But you had them down and it's just the worst feeling right now because you're looking at four, seven, you know, seven, six, eight, sevens just staring at you and you're just like, why? Yeah. And it just, it hurts. And they all have trample. And the fact that you took um, the, what is it? Um, the, um, where's the card at? Um, uh, their creature, and were and you were able to use it to grow off Nicholas, and it, yeah. you're not gonna win. No, yes, like that was just... such a sweet play, taking it and turning it for the Nicholas and taxing down. But ah, oh, and the thing is, just... even with the trample, you can't. <sighs> wow, that is heartbreaking. So, due to the disconnect, uh, we are seeing Holobalo going to be taking a game one. Uh, Swiss Stack and Holobalo will be continuing the match for the final decider of who reaches in the finals of the Pizza Box Open. We just got that in, and we are starting into game two after sideboarding. So, we do get the match. Let's get this on. Holobalo, now, are we going to see four Carnosaurs in the hand again? <laughs> I have to wonder. Hopefully, hopefully not. Hopefully we don't see that, but your hand looks a lot better, a lot smoother. Um, yeah, I, this opening isn't too bad, you know. Um, the Leyline Binding is a bit expensive still. But, uh, I mean, the Herd Migration, a couple Spark Doubles. I, like, I, I could see this being pitched back because the Spark Doubles are kind of dead in our hand, right? That's what I was going to ask you. Does Does that card need to be... In the in the deck more than in your hand. Yeah, you usually want it in the deck because that's the combo piece that lets you get Quintoris and have so many Quintoruses on. So it's a bit of a dead card in your hand. There are the odd circumstance, like you know, niche situations where having one in hand isn't the worst, but ideally you don't want it in the opener. And this mulligan here is into a really nice spot. Cavern of Souls, and we have the giant for ramp. It's it's crazy to me. That's Carnosaur is going to resolve. <laughs> uh, assuming yeah. Holobalo makes it to turn six. And you also you also have the herd migration. So you could be able to ramp ramp there, find land. Yeah, and we're we've got our five lands going so far. So herd migration is going to keep our life total nice and padded. Thin the deck a bit more. Uh Holobalo seems to have a nice, nice little start here for uh for the Quintoris deck. You know, I, I always think. love I always love uh other other countries um names of their lands because it's so dope to see like you know the plains, the swamp, they just have different names on there and in their in that language and it's so dope to see. I don't know why, I just love it. It's super interesting. Like there are certain names that are weirdly longer when translated into uh, different languages, depending on what you're looking at. Like, so here in Canada, right, we get cards printed in both English and uh, and French uh, in the Quebecois French. The name, for example, of Evolving Wilds is five words long to just simply <laughs> say Evolving Wilds. And it, it tra I, I will not remember the French name for it. I should. But I don't, but it roughly translates into the evolution of savage lands of plains. Like it, it's a ridiculously long translation for whatever that is, reason. That is hilarious. 
and you know when we get in this match I'll, a quick story my buddy when we when i started really playing competitive magic he had a plains or i'm uh, sorry it was a forest mm -hmm. but it was printed i believe in germany but it looks like a plane it looks like the old plains okay yeah. but it has it but it has the forest mana symbol on it so not saying it was cheating but he would go to tournaments and people would assume that's a plains and there's that mm. and then they would show it and say no it's a it's a uh, it's a forest and I, I eventually believe a judge had to basically tell him like yeah you can't use that card anymore because you're you're misrepresenting it <laughs> that's a fair judge get call they did get that's, people though i like that that kind of mental game and you know, speaking of like the mental game and catching people off, that's what we've got going on for game two here, right? Yeah. Hollow Ballo did not just cast out the Carnosaur. Yeah, they're sitting yeah. on five land, but they have that second uh, Cavern of Souls that they're going to be able to play and cat and and then um, play the Carnosaur. I think they just wanted to try to get some card draw, see if they can find something, but now. That they have four land plus the carnosaur hand it's just going to be time to slam down the carnosaur and see what you can do with it well like, without any ley line bindings like karuga can't really find us anything but it is just a big old five four on the uh on the board so if i had to guess like hollow ball yeah tempoed it out trying to bait out some cards from swiss stack's hand because that's a lot of mana that swiss stack had and just funneled three lightning axes in for it so Two mana open, yeah. Uh, Cavern of Souls named Dinosaur play in Carnosaur? Yep. Wow. Carnosaur slamming down and Swiss deck is going to either have to be two fiery impulses or a, like a Brazen Borer for Bounce Factor, something. There's Quintorus. We have the counter spell. Ah, uh, do we have the negate? <gasps> we, we do, do have, the, have negate. the negate. Okay. But there's a second. There's a second uh, dinosaur in hand. You're gonna get him down three. Okay. Do you, do they do they have? Can they get another um, phoenix in the graveyard? It's possible, but I don't even know if you'd be able to bring it back. I mean, Swiss Tech more than likely needs a treasure cruise, right? Like, ultimately, yeah, treasure cruise. We gotta refill our hand for some answers. Oh, they kept it on top. That smells like a treasure cruise to me. Oh, uh, fingers crossed. Yeah, it's a treasure cruise because they're looking at their graveyard. There it is. But There's the treasure cruise. But it doesn't allow you to pitch a phoenix, and you can't hard cast a phoenix. So here we go. We're gonna play another carnosaur. Ah, land again. I mean, we just have another carnosaur. Yeah. Spark double. Right. Spark double. This will become another carnosaur. We get another carnosaur trigger into another spark double. All right. The army of carnosaurs is growing, but Hollow Ballo is at three. Yeah. And I, I don't see. Is there a way? To give these carnosaurs haste in this deck, I don't believe so because they don't run that. Um... um, I don't think in this particular build there is. I would have to take a look, but uh, do we have do we have an answer for the Quintorus? Quintorus slamming down. Yeah, okay. they, they get to gain they get to gain life off this, but I think they. How many copies? One, two, three, four. So I'm assuming they have four more clone effects that they can copy. So there are four spark doubles and two clever impersonators. We have seen th two spark doubles and 
two clever impersonators, I believe. So there are right, two then, clone effects left. Okay, so bounce. Oh, but Brazen Borwer is just going to bounce it. I okay, so if this is if I'm if I, I would clever impersonate the phoenix. Oh, okay. Well, no, because there's still another potential Quintorus in the deck, right? Okay, so okay, wanna... okay, yeah, yeah. This is why I don't play this deck because I don't know. <laughs> okay, it's all so you... I don't play the deck either. All right, this has to I saw, be because I saw the I saw the one in the graveyard, I see one in hand, so that's why I was like, there there's this mark, mark double. double. Okay, so this is gaining life. We are at five and with a second Quintorus. Do you have any clone effects left though? There should be one, I think, still, right? Yep, there it is. One still left. So Holobalo is going to heal up to nine here. With another Carnosaur. And then another Quintorus. So this will heal them back up to 13. Mm. So this is why you don't listen to me. Because I would have cloned the Phoenix to block. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, hey, having a blocker is never a bad option. All right. Holobalo, 13. Tax in for 7. So Swiss X at 3. But six damage on board, so can Swiss deck pull out seven more damage? Ooh, yeah, that's the question. You're at three. You can't block with the uh, Brazen Bar. And this is all has Trample. Yeah, this is this is tough sledding right here. Yeah, th this is coming down. Just Can Swiss deck pull out seven damage? Okay, Ashiok. Ashiok, we target ourselves the mill. All land. Oh no, no Phoenix in the bin. No, I'm. We wanted to see a Phoenix off that mill for sure. Potentially treasure cruise. Okay, yeah. Treasure Cruise, Mana in a Dream, draw three. Slide a hand. Slide a hand. But even if you put a Phoenix in the grave, yeah. No, that's and that it. is game. Oh, so right. close. Hollow Ballo down at three and back to 13. Looking for the latest comic book to add to your collection? How about the last card for that Magic the Gathering Commander deck? Well, the comic book stores got you covered. Shop online at comicbookstore.tcgplayerpro.com or come in person at 30 North Main Street, Glassboro, New Jersey. This video is brought to you by MagicJank.com, the spiciest cards for your sauciest decks. Buy and sell Magic the Gathering products and gear today on MagicJank.com. Pizza people. Are you enjoying the content? Don't forget, subscribe to the channel. It's free. Hit that bell icon as well. That way, anytime any of our new content comes out, you're able to see it right away. Hey, leave a comment down below as well. Tell us what you're going to play in the next event or tell us what you're enjoying about the video. Don't forget, check out the description too. We've got tons of great content down below. And on top of that, we're going to have our tournament scheduled too. So get in on it. Hope to see you. To start this final match of the pizza box. Yeah, let's let's get going. And before we get started, I just want to say it's been a great uh getting to cast with you, talk magic with you. It's been an awesome day. Uh appreciate you for being here and appreciate, and you. appreciate you know to uh to agreeing to doing this. It's been real fun. This has been an absolute blast, and I can't think of any other better way to see this day come to a, a not I'm not gonna say a swift close but an interesting close because we have two very cool decks that can pop off in so many different ways. Yeah. So real quick, I am in, I am actually in uh, the Isaac Phoenix uh, players side. So Perfect. we'll be able to, uh, I'm a little delayed though, but in their hand, they have a fire impulse, 
two two arc light phoenixes, a spike field hazard, and a pathway. So, so they've got some more, good stuff. Yeah, they, they do have some good stuff, but they are a little, um, you know, they need that mana. But they, you obviously see they were able to draw the opt. So they're going to try to get to their fourth land. And it looks like they're digging in. on the uh, So on Hollow side here, we're looking at a very nice hand. We've got uh, our fourth land still. We have a Tanuki ready to ramp. Uh, second Leyline Binding. And we've got both Quintaurus and a Carnosaur in hand, ready to go. So a Hollow is looking nice and ready to just combo off as soon as their next turn rolls around with this Tanuki dropping in. So yeah. I, it's it's going to be interesting. Like, does the combo pop off? Yeah, and right now, uh, is it has nothing in hand to stop the combo, or they do have the fire? Does, does fire impulse hit uh, planeswalkers? I believe it's creature only. I I do believe fire impulse is creature only. I I could be mistaken yep. on that, and if I yep. am mistaken nope. on that, I apologize. Nope, you're hundred uh, percent right. So they, they yep, get to start sure. popping off here. Yeah, so Quintoris popping in. And so with Quintoris dropping down, this is a potential where this combo could potentially whiff. Well, it, it can't. I forgot that they have the spike field. <gasps> the spike field. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, the spike field makes all the difference there. Yeah, I forgot they wow. had that in hand. Now oh, that's a way to keep the game rolling. So they have a sleight of hand. They play the the uh, free free to free to fay, and they're looking at brazen borrower, lightning axe, or torch. Okay, going for the torch. Torch, uh, torch is able to hit planeswalkers, isn't it? <laughs> I feel like Torch can hit Planeswalkers, so that makes a, a really excellent choice. But, uh, I mean, Hollow is just, instead of hitting another land, we've got uh, another Quind off the draw. Yeah, so so Torch hits land. They know about the Torch. Do you play the Quind? I think you do play yeah. in the Quind, and you just uh, you try to combo. I got to check. I actually forget if Torch... No, it doesn't. Yeah, it does, it does yeah. Okay, yeah. So there it goes. And we're so, yeah, protecting, so okay. And we've chosen to protect Quinn by upticking. I like this. We've got two uh two spark doubles in hand, right? So protecting our Quinn by upticking makes a lot of sense. That being said, do you, are we are we gonna see a couple of Phoenixes brought back this turn? I think so. They they have two in hand. I think they're gonna so yeah, so they're gonna treasure cruise. They have enough to treasure cruise. Then yeah. you can fire fire the the three two kill the Quinn with all the phoenixes. And that these are phoenixes. Be, ooh, that could be disgusting. Because that's a second Quinn then that would be taken out, which relies this combo really on a Carnosaur drop. Yeah, and the problem is is they have a Carnosaur in hand, but they have two uh, spark doubles in hand also. Yeah, those old spark doubles in hand are really just proving problematic. Like, if Quinn stays on the board, it's fine. It's great. You know, we copy it. But if there's no copy target, the spark doubles just aren't going to do anything we want. Passing the turn. All right, we are going for a spark double. What's going to happen? Yeah, they have a lightning axe. They have a torch. They have an mm. opt. Yeah, and they, they're looking at the they're looking at the Quintaurus and they're with the torch and they're just like Ooh. Yeah, because that torch can only deal two. Yeah. And you kind of have to wait. You kind of want to wait. Yeah, I feel like you don't really have a choice but to wait, but you can only take out one of the Quintauruses here. Yep. So here you're gonna kill the one that has gone to one. Yep, the spark double copy, which makes it may make sense. It's the first target that went off, but uh clever person. There's, 
There's a clone. The big downside with this clever impersonator, though, right? It becomes a copy of our Quintaurus, but it's still legendary, so you can only keep one of the copies of these out. Oh, uh, and you didn't activate it. Yeah, so I would almost wonder if it maybe it was better for Hollow to go for using the minus four on the original Quint. But uh, nonetheless, we're still uh, we're still doing a small combo off here. We've got uh, another Quint into Quint. And getting that third spark, the other spark double. So that gives us uh, two Quinn triggers on this cast. The third double coming in non-legendary. And I think there's still one clever impersonator in the deck. So this may just be lethal. There it is. No, this won't be. This is uh, six damage, right? Six damage, but then they get to do it. One more do time. they have? Uh, they could do it once more, but I don't know if there's anything in the deck still, or is there? Well, no, because they have a one in their hand, so... Yeah, but there's no other yeah. spell in the deck to discover, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so then you swing for three, go to three. Yeah. And hold a ley line binding. And have four Quintoruses. <laughs> and, yeah, that's... um. Yeah, two two lane lane bindings, four Quintoruses, and a three two. I I think if I am the Quintorus player right now, I am very happy. So they drew a picklock prankster. And they have two ops a consider and a treasure cruise. Two ops and a treasure cruise, going for one. Okay. Uh, I think I think the problem is is land. Yeah, land could I could certainly see land being a limiting factor. You know, if San Doyage is able to get three or four Phoenixes into play here, uh, I could that could be a potential comeback, right? Because then that's no, all the good horses. Well, no, because they have the ley line. Oh, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. So it wouldn't even matter. You're gonna, yeah, you're gonna be able to ley line binding one of them. They don't have they don't have any um, counterspell magic or anything like that. Oh and no! Yeah, the... if, they, if they play, they have a leather shredder and a pickpocketer. So if they play either one of those, they're tapped out. And then that'll just be the game. Yeah, because you can just go ahead and lay line binding this. That is four sure. phoenixes. Yeah. I almost like. If it if we had like another torch in hand, if Sandwich had another torch to the tower, I think that would have been a big difference, right? Because even if uh, a Phoenix had have been binding, you could have still used the torch to take out a, a, a Quintoris yep. to stay alive. But wow, what a play! All four Phoenixes hitting the bin, able to come back, and what would have been a sweep up here just gets taken down by a leyline binding. So they have the spark double in hand, uh, but that doesn't do anything, huh? No, it makes a copy of Quintoris, but there's nothing left in the deck for Quintoris to discover to. So this isn't exactly game over for uh, Hollow Ballo yet. There's nothing to uh, like you can't discover in anything. Yeah, and they have the fire impulse for the three two, yep. but there's, well, you have another, you still have another ley line binding. You do. I, I think the way for uh, Hollow Ball is still in a very good spot to take this game. Uh, if a Quintoris manages to stay alive, Carnosaur can uh, close out this first game still. Because Carnosaur would get the Discover trigger because there should still be one other, uh, one or two other Quintoris cons in the deck itself, right? So. They haven't drawn any kind of counter spells. So if you if they send two two whatever one they send one uh, phoenix, like they're gonna have to send everything, huh? More or less, yeah. Because like they have to consider that there may be a leyline binding in Hollow's yeah. hand, of course, which we see there is. Yeah. But, so yeah, 
I actually let these Quins die. Yeah, you think because you if they're well because if they're going to swing everything at at the Quins, you let them swing it. End of turn, leyline binding the three five. Okay. So now, so now you just whatever one only one Phoenix attacked, you just leyline binding that one. I can see that. Have, yeah, they only have fiery impulse. And consider, and those are the and um, ops. So those are the only spells they can cast. Okay, I could see that. I I don't mind still the uh, the leyline binding coming out here to take out a phoenix if we want a quan to live. But uh, I I can definitely uh, agree with the rationale taking out a blocker well, so you swing in with a spirit and win. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, I was thinking if they swung everything. Now that they're only swinging with the phoenixes, you get the you take the phoenix one the one phoenix that's. Attacking the Quinn, then you get the Carnosaur the next turn, right? And that should spell the lethal win. We're gonna binding the uh, going for the Ledger Shredder. Okay, so they're letting the Quins die. Sand only has one blocker. But they, but they have the fiery impulse, so they could take care of not care only, of yeah, yeah, take care of the spirit, yeah. So is this is, actually, is this the three life comeback for is it Phoenix against the combo? Yeah, I think I would have ley line by held on to one of my Quins. Yeah, because like Qu 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 Quintorius is how you just regain your life a bit. I mean, you're at thirty life. Yeah, and I mean we have a carnosaur. Like the carnosaur is is no small uh no small thing. Yeah. And there's a, a Quintorus for us. Now see if we had a uh, our clone Quintorus, this would have been uh, we would have had sand at one for sure. But uh I mean this is a threatening board still. You have a seven six and a three two. Sands at three life. So you can't really be, uh, you know, you can't be negligent with your attacks. And as long as that Pitalog yeah. Prankster stays alive, that's your blocker against the Carnosaur because of the eidetic memory. Vigilance, heck of a keyword sometimes, right? Very much so. Okay, we got an impulse. And they have the fire, the, the, the lightning axe. So yeah, Ooh. see, I think the mistake here was you should have laid line biting one of those phoenixes, keeping the Quinn around. Because now yeah. your Quinn's gonna die. You can't play any cards in your hand. So unless you draw another ley line binding, you're not gonna be able to get three damage through. And there's the ley line binding. Ley line off binding. Top. <laughs> oh no, it doesn't matter. No, but it doesn't matter. The five the five the five uh never mind. Because I forgot you like you said, um um, what's that thing right there? The uh, where it doesn't Garuda. tap when it attacks. No, where it doesn't tap where it attacks. Oh, vigilance on the pitiful like yeah. yeah. Oh no, the carnosaur has no targets left in the deck. Yep. Oh we are in trouble. No. We have the binding. So they drew lands, uh, canal. So they're gonna prankster, prankster into treasure cruise. Wow. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Yeah, this might not. That be That is getting dangerous. Well, well, no, because all the phoenixes are out. You know, there's no more phoenix in the deck. Yeah, I don't know that it matters that they're in the deck though, like life, life totals. Team. But um, I it draws into question about cards and deck left though. Yeah. Sandwich only has eight cards left in the deck. I feel like I'm saying Sand's name wrong, and I apologize if I am. Yeah, because the problem is Sandwich. here is they they can they can all swing out. It's nine, fourteen, fifteen. You're still six short. You can't cast a cast cackle uh, a Drake. You can't. You can cast. 
another prankster, but you're going to need everything to block it. Yeah, because any damage you take from the... Like, you have to block the Carnosaur. And with that Leyline Binding, our 5-7... Oh, no, we, oh, no, no we, we forgot about that. I totally forgot about that. It's 11. Wait, is this... No, that's not lethal. We'd have them at... Hollow would be at 1 if everything was swung out. Oh, the worst. One one mana uh, one point of damage short. Yeah, I mean okay, that being so said, here, though, I think you, you swing out. Swing out. I think for sure Hollow has to swing, but like Garuda potentially tries to find uh, another Carnosaur or something from Sandy's. Didn't and, find uh, anything. No. So you swing out and they're gonna double block. Why well, here's, here's yeah. my thing. You you swing out, they double block Carnosaur, and then you but then you um Leyline Binding, one of the creatures, hoping that they only single block or double block, you know. Hmm. Interesting. So it it would have definitely depended on how blockers went. If if Sandy used both Pedalock Pranksters to block the trumpeting Carnosaur, damage still would not have been enough to get through. It would have been like uh, you know a single Phoenix blocks Garuda, a single Phoenix blocks the Spirit. Those don't have trample, and then you just kind of double or triple block the Carnosaur. So yeah. I, I think like there is a potential where Sand doesn't block correctly and damage gets through from uh, for hollow but i respect the concede like there's there's very little percent chance that uh, blockers aren't done correctly but you know i mean some you should you, playing it out sometimes makes it work it, it can certainly happen but nonetheless like sandwich lived through the full out combo and took game one that's that's wild that's wild so I, I I missed on what they what they were uh what they were bringing in. Oh no. Oh, this is not good. Oh, Hollow but ballos. It, it, No, no, but we're going to get a double. They both they both um mold the mold mold the 5 for both? Uh Yeah, mold the 5 for both. Oh my goodness. That is okay. Wow, game two. Both players have mulliganed. That is that is crazy. I oh, this could go so many ways. Thought distortion is in, uh, in their hand. Yep. But that is a six drop. Is it? Thought it is a six drop. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Thought distortion six drop. There's a carnosaur and a cavern soul. So. Cavern naming dinosaur, you know, that kind of guarantees the carnosaur for turn six, but there's no ramp. Hollow's yeah, got no and, ramp in hand. And the Phoenix player has uh, Prankster, um, Consider, they just put on top Brazen Borrower. Oh, that's a sweet card to have. All right, we are we are seeing a draw. Quintoris Khan now in hand. Cavern Souls dropped in, and we're gonna add Karuga to our hand. All those fitting in kind of nicely. You know, our hand is looking to have what we want. If we hit a land, it's great. But uh, it looks like Sandwich just has uh, is it Phoenix in the graveyard ready and primed now? So they have the choice between Torch and Brazen Borrower. Uh, they have a land in hand. Now they go slide a hand. So if if I was Holobalo, I'm praying to hurry up and get to six land, so I can just yeah. cast this. Is this because it's all they all their hand is is just okay? Slide a hand. It's like coming in, yeah, and a vigilance. The one three, the pranksters that basically. Help to close out game one, doing some work. And Hollow has managed to draw in some ramp off the top. 
with our Beanstalk Giant. So we are getting ever closer to that five and six mana. There's the black. You get to play the land. Yep. Sacred Foundry comes on in. If we see a top deck land from Hollow Ball next turn, that's an uncounterable Carnosaur. That could be so scary. Yeah. Torch, though, does. If I'm. I know we keep saying it. Torch does two or it does three if you bargain it. But it does hit a Planeswalker. That's that's the important that's, thing, is the Planeswalker. It is, because we're all about Quintaurus in this combo. Now, they don't have a counterspell here. Okay. They got the, they got the treasure cruise right here. That's going to be a heckin' sweet card to drop in, getting that card draw. Oh. Now, Hollow's got a Leyline Binding opened up. That may see some use into this Prankster or into the Phoenix if it comes back this turn. Yeah, let's see but, what cards he uh, draws. I don't, Sandwich has like a full grip at the moment with that hand, right? Just Yeah, they have a full in. grip. Got an Opt and got a Leisure Shredder. They go with the That's Opt. That's a good one. Okay, so, yeah. So that's three spells. That is our Phoenix coming back. And that's also a five on the uh, Prost Eidetic Memory. All right, Prankster gone. The Phoenix comes in. Yeah, and the Isa player does have Treasure Cruise, Shredder. Oh, but he's a Carnosaur. Carnosaur killing the Phoenix, just preventing any damage. I like that, because we can't guarantee we're going to draw a land off the top. And there's oh. the land. Yeah, we draw it anyways. Oh, that would have been the Carnosaur. Ah, uh, that's... It's right. a little unfortunate because, but you get those thought, you thought that there's, there's you do thought distortion, which is disgusting nonetheless. And they they basically lose all the cards. Does Brazen Borrow? Because is it a creature in your hand or is it a? It counts as a creature in your hand. My goodness, though, hard casted thought distortion in the finals, game two. And well, you know, actually, still a hand from Sand Sandwich. Like, uh, Ledger Shredder could, could carry this game, but but now you have the Quintorus in hand, you get to try to combo off because they only That's have true. an op, they cast the op, they drew a land. So, I mean, Brazen Borrow, Brazen Borrow can bounce the Quintorus if need be. Yeah, he could. So you can bounce the Quintaurus back, kind of hold off for the turn. And another thought distortion. That another doesn't help. Distortion. All right, so Karuga for a draw. I do kind of like that. Kind of refill our hand a bit. Because, like, there's no guarantee. You know about uh, the cards in hand. So playing Quintaurus, we know, is not a good idea. It leads us to fail. So we want to respect yeah. that. Oh, but here... Oh, no. Again. Disdainful okay. Stroke is not going to be able to do anything. Nope, because that Cavern of Souls... So the Carnosaur that was just drawn is going to be uh, pretty sweet to draw in. And we're tacking in for five. Sandwich is going to get hollowed down to 13 on this go. And still holding up the Brazen Borer. So, like, the Borer hits the Carnosaur. If Quintaurus came into play, the Borer hits Quintaurus. Is there an out at the moment? Like, I I feel like you have to play the Carnosaur to kind of bait things. Yeah. Or hold the it back is, for removal, right? Yeah, because the problem is, is what? They, well, here's the thing. They don't have any card draw right now. So, they're not going to yeah. be able to use 
uh, the the Izzet player has no card draw. They have Brazen Bar or uh, Disdainful Stroke Negate. Okay, Disdainful Stroke Negate, yeah. So if you bounce the Connoisseur, you get to replay the Connoisseur next turn. Okay, so you that's negate. true and rinse repeat. But there's but the negate. There's the gate. Ledger Shredder into Treasure Cruise. Uh oh. Oh I think no. Ledger, I think it's game now. I am tending to agree because oh, with the, with, the, with the Phoenix going into the bend. Yeah, Hall is at thirteen, and uh, Sandwich has ten damage on board alone. Yep, All we need able... is a few spells for Phoenix to come back, and that's going to close up the game. And there's, two, and there's two Phoenixes in in the in the grave. And then on top of that, you have the connive triggers on the Ledger Shredders with the eidetic memory. Is that what? But here's the oh wait a minute, oh no okay so there he goes yep the three yeah. trigger the three spells, and Isaac Phoenix is gonna take this down. What an Ending to the top eight, the pizza box today closeout. Combos have been rolling off and rolling off, and Phoenix comes in for that final big swing. Let's get a final Phoenix count after we go sleight of hand for the final play in. How many Phoenixes are there with this cross identity memory? Two Phoenixes and seven cards drawn. That is a grand total of a lot of damage and lethal congratulations sandwich on your win and the finals of the pizza box and gg's the hollow for making it second place congrats both players that was intense